When you see the option to switch between two different visualizations in Power BI like this over here, you probably straight away think, ah, those are two charts, and then with bookmarks, we can switch between one and the other. However, actually, this is just one chart and no bookmarks. Now, let me show you how to set it up. Now, don't get me wrong, with bookmarks, we can do many things in Power BI and it can be very powerful. However, they often exponentially grow in a report and they can be a pain to maintain. So therefore, if I see the option to not have bookmarks and instead of having two charts, just one, well, that sounds pretty good, right? So let's go to our example. We have here a chart that shows the per month rent prices for different cities. It would be insightful to know the spread of these prices. And for this, we could create something like a box plot for each city that shows the range, the difference between the minimum and the maximum, as well as the interquartile range from the 25th percentile to the 75th percentile. Now your first thought might be, oh, we could just create a tooltip. And that's right, we could create a tooltip that, that shows these values. However, then I see it just for one city, one data point. And I would like to see that spread for each city, like this over here. So instead of creating a new chart, let's do some tricks with the formatting. Now, I'm going to select the visualization, open up the formatting pane. And first of all, I'm going to visualize these box plots, these ranges. Now, we can do that with arrow bars. And here we have the option to add arrow bars to our series rent price average. Now, the thing is, though, I want to have two different types of ranges. The one that goes from the minimum to the maximum and the inner one that needs to look a little bit different. And therefore, I need more than one series if I want to be able to build two or more arrow bars. So, this we can do with dummies. So let me create a dummy. Let's call it dummy one, and we set it equal to zero. And then we do this one more time. And this one I'm going to call dummy two. But then we can add them to the chart. And you see we have a clustered column chart now with on the y-axis the price average, dummy one, dummy two. Now this doesn't look great because each dummy takes some space. So the next thing that I do is make sure that they overlap. Now, I go back to formatting, then here we can go to columns, and then from layout, there we can set the space between the series to 100%. Now, another thing that you might notice is that the labels show up for these dummies, which we don't want. So therefore, let's go to the data labels, and then for dummy one, we turn the data labels off, and also for dummy two, we also turn them off. Okay, so now it looks as before. However, we have two extra series, meaning we can use the series for the arrow bars. So if I now go to the arrow bars, you see, ah, we have dummy one, dummy two. Now that lets us create different looking arrow bars. So let's turn the first ones on. And here I want to have a line that goes from the minimum price to the maximum price. So the upper bound is going to be the max value for the rental prices. And here for the lower bound, we choose the min value. Now to make that look a little bit better, I'm going to get rid of the border line on the bar. So border size, you can set to zero. All right. And then here the bar color, let's make it a little bit lighter. There you go. Now the same thing we can do for the inner quarter range. So if we now go to dummy two, there we can also add arrow bars. But here, the lower and upper bound are going to be the 25th and 75th percentile. Now, that doesn't look amazing just yet. So let's go for a different color for the inner part. So let's go for a lighter blue. And also here, let's set the border size to zero. And we can make the width a little bit thicker. So that stands out. And here, we can get rid of the markers or we go for a different marker shape like circles. And let's maybe make them a little bit smaller, for example, four. That looks nice. Now these arrow bars are basically the visualization that I want to show on a click. And then the actual column chart that we started off with should disappear. So I want to toggle between the two different views. Now for that, we need to well, create a button. So that's going to be the next step. Now this button basically needs to have two options on off a toggle, right? So I'm going to go here to modeling. And then we're going to make use of parameters, numeric range. And we can call this parameter toggle. And here we set the minimum to zero, maximum to one. Data type is whole number and increment of one. Perfect. Okay, now here the default zero, one doesn't really matter. And we want to have a slicer on the page. Let's create it. Now it shows a slider by default. Let's change that from slicer settings, where we can first of all put this to a tile. 
All right, and under selection, we want to turn off multi-select. We want to have single select. There you go. And maybe we also get rid of the header. We don't really need that at the moment. And here under size and style, let's turn off the background. Okay, now I'm going to put these buttons over here on the right hand side. And nothing happens yet, of course. This just gives us a button which lets the user toggle between two states. All right, now it doesn't look like a nice toggle yet, but that's a problem for later. The next thing that we need to do is somehow connect that to the measures that are being visualized in this chart. So if we now go here back to the data pane, select dummy one. And here I want to use an if function to check which button is selected. So if the parameter toggle value is equal to one, all right, then I want to have that zero, otherwise I want to return nothing. Okay, now the same thing we can do also for dummy two. So let's copy this over. Now while I'm selecting dummy two, you see that line from min to max already disappeared. And here we're going to do exactly the same. And now also that inner range disappeared. And when I click on one, then ah, we have our arrow bars back. Okay, now what about the main columns that are visible? Well, there we need to do the same. Now here you can choose to do it on that main measure, but probably not a good, good idea. It's probably better if we create a copy of this one. So new measure, copy it over. And also here we want to check if that parameter toggle value, so here I'm toggle value, if it's equal now not to one, but to zero, then we want to show it. Otherwise, we want to return nothing. And we still need to rename it to rent price average on select. And then we need to use that new measure on our visualization. So let's go to our visual. And then here we replace the rent price average with rent price average on select. Okay, now nothing changed until I click on the other button. And now you see the columns disappear and we have the arrow bars. Now, of course, for these arrow bars, we either need to show labels or the y-axis. So let's go here to formatting, y-axis, and then here I want to show those values, all right? And then when I switch back, and I don't want to show them here, let's say, because I already have the labels, well, then we cannot really turn them off conditionally. Would have been nice. However, what we can do is make the values white so that we don't see it. Now the thing is, if I make them white here, they will also still be white when I change to the ranges. So therefore we need to use conditional formatting. And also here we can just check the parameter toggle value. So let's take that measure and if it's equal to zero, then we want to have white. Then let's add another rule. And if it's equal to one, then I want to have, let's go for gray and let's click on okay. So now it doesn't show, and if I click on one, you see now we have the y-axis value showing. Okay, nice. And now we just need to take that slicer and turn it into a toggle so that the user has a nice switch between showing the average prices and the spread of the prices for each city. Now how to set it up, I show you in this video over here. So you see, we have a visualization switch without using bookmarks and using only one chart. Now, of course, this is not possible with all charts, however, with quite a few. For example, to switch between a column and line chart, you could use a combo chart. Now, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you want to see more videos like this, then check out these ones over here. And if you want to build reports together with me, then check out my design transformation program over here. Now, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.